Today I want to take you along with me to Aldi's to search out their best bargain basement prices. And then after we shop a little, I thought I would take you back home with me and I'll show you everything that made it into my cart. And I'll also share with you what didn't make it into my cart. Hi, sweet friends. I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest, where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning how to be a modern pioneer in the kitchen, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. And as always, I'll definitely have the chapter timestamps in the description and in the pinned comment underneath this video, so you can jump ahead whenever you want. So today, Ted and I had to head up to Georgetown, and that's where Aldi's is located. Now, there's another one in a different town called Pflugerville here in Central Texas, but we had to go to Georgetown, so I'm going to go to that Aldi's. And I've got my trusty pilot here with me. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> Who's driving the car. And the first thing we're going to do, though, is stop for coffee. I really need a cup of coffee. So we're going to pull through uh, and stop at a La Madeleine's. I don't know if you have those in the area where you live. They're very lovely little sort of kind of French style bistros, but they've got a great, strong French roast coffee. And that is what I definitely need this morning. Well, we stopped for our coffee. Actually, in Ted's case, it's iced tea. But we stopped at La Madeleine's and I got a wonderful cup of French roast coffee and they had a little half and half, so it was delightful. And what I love about La Madeleine's is you can get as many free refills as you want. So that's really great if you like coffee like I do. And they even give you a to-go cup. So I was able to get a, some coffee to go as well, in addition to the cup that I had there. And when we got into the restaurant, it was completely empty. So normally we were planning on just to grab a, a little lunch out uh, while we were running our errands up in the Georgetown area, because we'll be gone for the better part of the day. Georgetown's far from where we live. And, uh, but the restaurant was completely empty. So we decided to give them some business and just have breakfast here. And it was delicious. We haven't had breakfast at a La Madeleine's in a long time. So it was a real treat. And Ted and I both got the French breakfast and it's great. It's got scrambled eggs, bacon, a croissant, and a potato galette. Uh, that and coffee. So now I'm very well fortified for our day of shopping at all these as well as running some other errands. Well, while we're near the Madeleines, we took a little detour and we're going to stop at Savers. This is another store we don't get to visit very often because the one that was closer to where we lived closed. Uh, but this one up here is still open. Uh, so we're just going to kind of tour around a little and see what if we find any goodies. So we're here at Aldi's, so let's shop around and see what good bargains we can find. So these clamshells of greens seem like a good buy. I just used one the other day in the recipe that I shared with you for the hash brown cups, and I definitely paid more than the prices that they're showing here. And I've been wanting to do a cream sauce for, spe for spaghetti with some greens. So I'm thinking that maybe I'll get these. They've got the zucchini on sale today for 99 cents a pound. This is great chopped up with some onions and some tomatoes. It's an absolutely delicious side dish and it's so easy to prepare. Today they've got three pounds of sweet potatoes for $2.79. So that comes in under a dollar a pound. You can't go wrong for that. They've got organic apple cider vinegar raw with the mother. The only drawback is it's $4.95, almost $5. And technically, even though yes, our version is an apple scrap vinegar, 
I think it's pretty darn close, if not better uh, than what's sold here. This is pretty light in comparison uh, to the ones we make when we use apple scraps. Uh, so this might be better off staying here rather than in your cart. However, I do always keep one or two apple cider vinegars like this in the jar, but I have some already at home that I picked up at HEB. And it was a little darker in color too, which I like, and there would seem to be like more mother on the bottom. But the reason that I pick those up is I use those for when I'm soaking bones to make bone broth, because I often want to reserve my homemade raw apple cider vinegar or apple scrap vinegar uh, for using in salad dressings and whatnot, because I want to keep that raw uh, factor alive. The jarred artichoke hearts are on sale today for $2.59 down from $2.89, but the only drawback I find with these is I wish they were in olive oil, but they'd probably be more expensive. They're in sunflower oil. You may want to pass these up, but if you want to keep them, if you do decide that you want to buy some, I would always recommend maybe draining them best you can, and then maybe adding your own olive oil. Now, I was talking about the marinated artichoke hearts, but I just realized that the ones that are just quartered are packed in water. So if this is something that you like to have, this is great, you know, adding really to anything, to pasta or to an antipasta platter. Having artichoke hearts are great. So these being packed in water is probably something good to add, uh, you know, to your pantry, to your working pantry, not necessarily something you're going to really stock up on in your prepper pantry. But, but maybe, you know, for entertaining this summer, for $2.59, it's probably a good buy. Now they've got some jams on sale today. Their brand is $2.79, or at least they're just their regular brand is $2.79. And then they've got uh, their organic brand for actually $2.65. But I really prefer this brand, just their main brand, because it's made with fruit before sugar. The organic one has sugar as the first ingredient. And as I've shared with you in the past, I always like to try to get those types of jams if I'm buying them at the store where they put fruit first. This isn't on sale, but this seems like a good price, $2.45 for 16 ounces of salsa. And it's organic and they have the thick and chunky, which is what I like. And they have uh, the hot version and the medium version. And if organic or non-organic doesn't matter to you, this seems like a really good buy. They've got the mild salsa, also chunky, and they've got the medium, and this is 24 ounces, and it's only $2.19. That seems like a really good buy. Now definitely, if you're growing tomatoes and maybe jalapenos and different things like that this summer, and you make a fermented salsa, all the better. But, as I've often shared with you about having multiple streams of food, I think it's a good idea, if you like salsa, to have some uh, in your working pantry and maybe a jar or two in your prepper pantry for backup as well. Well, when we get back to my house, we're going to go over a few more things as to what made it into my cart and what didn't make it into my cart. But this is something that I want to tell you. I'm the first person to love queso, but this is something I say make homemade. Even though this is on sale for $1.89, 10 cents down from $1.99, these type of things like queso in the jar have so many artificial ingredients. I mean, this is like so over the top that it's definitely something we don't want in our traditional foods kitchen, even when it comes to multiple streams of food. If you can find a queso that has just a few ingredients in it, great. But I really have never had very much luck with that. Uh, so I definitely, this is one of those things I definitely recommend making homemade. And you know, I don't think I've shared with you a homemade queso video. If that's something you want to see, let me know. Put it in the comments below and I'll definitely share it with you. Now, it's easy enough to make homemade butter cookies, but I just wanted to share this with you. These are $2.65, and my mother would really get a kick out of this because this is 4.41 ounces, and my mom would say $2.65, and it's not even a pound. I always remember that growing up. When she would look at cookies, she'd always see if, if you were gonna get at least a pound out of the box. But what I wanted to share with, about, with you about these, if you see these at your all these, yes, they are made with butter, but the first ingredient is sugar. Now, if we were making these homemade, the first ingredient would not be sugar. 
and we could use alternate sweeteners in our traditional foods kitchen. So we could use like sucanat or maple sugar uh, or date sugar, you know, so on and so forth. So if you see these, you'll know they're made with butter, but the first ingredient is sugar. Now they do have a pretty good assortment of crackers. However, just like the cookies, this is just five ounces and it's $2.39. And basically all it is is white flour and then they use a little sunflower oil. I've got a number of cracker recipes that I show you how to make uh, for a lot less than $2.39 for five ounces. <laughs> I'm gonna make a couple of pounds of crackers for that amount of money. And I'll be sure to link to those in the description below uh, so you can make them. I have easy slice and bake. I have ones that you can make with sourdough discard if you have a sourdough starter. So I have a lot of different uh, crackers that you can make for a lot less than this and a lot more nutritious. All their snack packs are on sale. I'm not sure if it's because maybe the kids aren't in school anymore and so these are not selling as well or because maybe they wanted to put them on sale because more kids are home and are going to summer camp and need things like this. But either way, I always find these snack packs expensive. And they're not the end of the world, though. They're basically cheese and some pepperoni. I think they've got maybe nuts in them, uh, maybe some dried fruit in some of them. Uh, but look at the prices. This was $2.95, okay, 10 cents down, $2.85. This one was $3.49, and okay, now it's on sale for $3.19. But look at what a small amount of food is in here. Now, granted, yes, there are three little snack packs in here, but as you see, look, I can fit that in my hand. These are tiny, and you could easily put together your own snack packs for a fraction of this, core, of, of this cost. Just get some of those little reusable bento boxes. Benjamin had one, this is like, you know, 20 plus years ago. I used to send Benjamin to pre-K before we started homeschooling with a little uh, bento box. And it co would cost a fraction of this. Even today, uh, you're gonna be able to make these snack packs for a lot less. Now this particular snack pack, it's got pretzels and what they're calling cream cheese, <laughs> uh, down from $1.69 to $1.49. But the only drawback is this is loaded with artificial ingredients. And you could have your own little homemade cream cheese that, that I've shown you how to make uh, from yogurt. And even if you buy the pretzels, you're still gonna come in a, a, under $1.49 for something this small. And you're gonna be feeding yourself, and especially kids, your children, uh, a real probiotic rich type of cheese. So I would, I would pass on stuff like this. Whenever I come to Aldi's, I always like to check out their coffee because they usually have pretty good buys on coffee. So does Trader Joe's whenever, I haven't been to a Trader Joe's in ages, but the last time I was there, they had pretty good prices on coffee as well. But sometimes ounce for ounce, it can be hard to beat because uh, the prices at Costco or Sam's Club for the whole beans uh, is usually very good ounce per ounce. So these are organic beans and they're down from $6.49 to $6.19. So that's a pretty good buy. This is 12 ounces, and then they have the ground coffee. This isn't organic, but it's down from $5.75 to $5.59. So these basically are good buys. Um, I do prefer, when I can, to buy the beans because they store better, and then I just I have a little grinder, and then I just grind them. Uh, and I, gr I don't grind them like every night. I try to grind, you know, enough, say, for the week. And then I just use that to make my coffee. Uh, I do keep a couple of bags of the ground coffee for when I'm feeling lazy, or I just don't get around to grinding the beans. But uh, I do keep a close eye on the best use by date. And the reason is that is the one thing that I do feel, being such a coffee lover, that, uh, coffee is best when used, the ground, the, the ground coffee is best used when it's within the best used by date. It tastes the nicest, tastes the freshest. But the beans, I feel, last a really long time. And when you store them correctly, and I have a whole video where I show you how to store all kinds of food, you know, for your prepper or your extended pantry. 
Uh, but the beans tend to do really well. I have found that they last a really long time, well past the best use by date on the package. And, uh, and you grind them up and they're wonderful. Now they do have sharp cheddar cheese that's shredded on sale down 10 cents from $2.99 to $2.89. However, unless you're really strapped for time, I highly recommend buying a whole piece of cheddar cheese. It's gonna be less expensive ounce per ounce and then grating it yourself because when they sell the cheese already grated like this, they have to toss it with things like cellulose and whatnot, which is basically like sawdust. <laughs> they have to toss it with things to keep it from sticking together. Uh, so ounce for ounce, you're gonna do better uh, if you can just grate it yourself. Alrighty, for $3.59, this is the type of thing you wanna stock up on for your extended pantry, or your survival pantry, that part of your extended or prepper pantry where you keep your forever foods, because this is basically a forever food. These are those freeze-dried instant coffee. Sorry, it's kind of noisy in here today. They're doing a lot of stocking, but th these are great to have because if you keep these unopened, they will literally stay fresh for like forever. And then once you open them, then yes, you'll want to start using them up, but they're terrific uh, if, all you, if that's all you have on hand. Uh, so definitely think of getting a jar or two, uh, whether you like the caffeinated, they have the decaffeinated also. And put the, I have two of these in my you know, extended or like my forever food section of my prepper pantry. And so you should definitely do that too if you like coffee. And yes, I know it's not the same as fresh brewed, but those of us who are coffee drinkers, you have to let me know in the comments below if you feel as I do. If this is all you have, it's better than nothing. And speaking of prepper pantries, extended pantries, survival pantries, forever food pantries, let me know in the comments below if you would like to see me do a video on how to find space for these various forms of extended pantries because I've been thinking about wanting to do that for you because I've, I know you've mentioned to me before that finding room for the extended pantry, you know, the working pantry is okay, the fridge and the freezer obviously, but finding room for those items that we want to have in our extended pantry uh, and the various areas of our extended pantry, the prepper pantry, the healing pantry, the survival pantry, the emergency pantry, the forever boots pantry. It can become a little overwhelming sometimes, but I have a really good system and I'm so happy to share it with you. So let me know and uh, in the comments below, I'll definitely uh, share a video with you on the, how I find space in my house. Well, today they've got the maple syrup on sale and this is a pretty good price. This was, uh, almost, this is 12 and a half ounces, so almost, you know, close to 13 ounces, uh, was $6.49, but now it's down to $5.99. Now, I'm not sure which grade this is. It looks like the lighter grade. I like the darker grade only because it's a little more nutritious, uh, but if you're new to maple syrup or it's not your favorite flavor in the world, uh, but you do want to use it in place of white sugar, the lighter grade uh, is usually, you know, has less strong of a maple -y flavor. And at $5.99, this is definitely worth stocking up on. Now they've got old-fashioned rolled oats. They're not on sale. These are the ones I would normally tell you to buy uh, if you are buying something to make oatmeal. Now personally, I think that if you can go with oat groats, which is the whole oat, or even the steel-cut oats, uh, that's going to be better. Uh, but in a pinch, uh, the old-fashioned rolled oats are very good making granola. I've got recipes for you for homemade granola and granola bars. This definitely works well. But if you've seen it in the past, I've shared with you a video where uh, it's the mock mill company, uh, the people who make the grain mill, they make a flaker. And I'll be sure to link to that video below. And it's so fantastic. You can run your oat groats, your whole oats, uh, through the flaker and make your own old-fashioned rolled oatmeal and it's a lot healthier uh, because the way oats are made when they're made into this form there is some steaming and 
different processes that they go through. It's a little more processed than what we may like, uh, but rolling them yourself is really fun and it's a more natural process. Uh, but in any event, if you don't have a flaker, don't worry about it. Uh, this, uh, for $3.85, the price has gone up. Uh, it's not the, the same bargain. Uh, rolled oats, old-fashioned rolled oats are not the same bargain they used to be. Uh, but that's, a, you know, all things considered, depending what the price is at your grocery store, uh, as opposed to all these, uh, that seems like a pretty good price. Now, grits are on sale. I will confess I'm not a fan of grits, but if you like them, they do have them on sale here for $1.59, and that's down from $2.15. Now, the only drawback is they are the quick grits, and whenever you see like quick rolled oats or quick grits, quick this, quick that, uh, means that they've been more processed. Yes, they'll cook quicker, but we don't necessarily want these things to cook quicker. We want to soak them overnight and then cook them in the morning uh, to make them more easy to digest. Often the process that cereals have gone through when they're labeled quick is a more destructive process. Sometimes what can happen is the nutrients can be damaged during the quick processing. Uh, so always keep that in mind. And it's okay once in a while if you're under a rush and you just want something that can be very easy to prepare. It's just the fact that we don't want to make these things an everyday regular thing when we're trying to transition to a traditional foods kitchen. But certainly every once in a while you know, if you need something quick, I completely understand that. But little by little, we just want to wean ourselves off of the quick things. Now keep in mind, I don't want you to get the wrong idea that I'm telling you, oh, you're going to be slaving in the kitchen for like ever cooking away. No. The nice thing about traditional foods is often the preparation on our part is relatively small in terms of time and the preparation on the part of the food, whether it's a fermentation or a sourdough or you're roasting a chicken, all of these things, the, the time is part of the process that the food is going through or work on the oven, the oven's part or the stovetop's part. So know that you're not gonna be just, you know, working like crazy in the kitchen as you transition to a traditional foods kitchen. Uh, you're actually, you may even find sometimes you have a little extra time, especially if you start roasting whole chickens as opposed to having to do a fancy recipe with boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Now, I generally don't buy a lot of juice, but this is a good buy. This was $3.89 and it's down to $3.49. And it's, a, it's all juice, which is what I like. And it's got some really nice flavors. They got black cherry plum, and then they have pomegranate plum, and there's a few other juices in there. But what this is great for using for, if you make water kefir, and, or you make homemade sodas with the ginger bug, and with the water kefir, if you do the second ferment, uh, you can add a little bit of juice, and it makes a lovely flavored water kefir. And so that's really nice. And then if you want to do a homemade soda with one of these, you can carbonate it with your, and ferment it with your ginger bug. And that can be very fun too. You can use the ginger bug just to make a fun ginger ale, but if you want to make different flavored, uh, like uh, different flavored sodas, like I've showed you how to make strawberry soda, uh, you can do that with juice and your ginger bug. So you can make it fermented and fizzy. And I think this is especially fun, fun during the summer you know, when the kids are home and you want to make some homemade sodas as opposed to ones that you buy at the store that are just going to be loaded with uh, a lot of processed ingredients, including high fructose corn syrup, which we don't want in our traditional foods kitchens. Now, Aldi's always has a good selection of canned goods, including canned fruits and canned vegetables. We're looking now at the canned fruits. I will say one thing. No, there's no getting around it. Canned fruit has gone up in price. So if you're able to grow, if you've got some fruit trees or you can get some really good buys uh, on a case of fruit at the farmer's market and then home can it, all the better. I share a video with you where I show you how to home can pears. And home canning fruit is actually, you know, certain types of fruit, it's actually very easy to do. And you can water bath can them. 
Now they've got the pears, they're sliced pears, they're $1.35 a can, so you see they're not, you know, this isn't exactly a bargain basement price. Uh, but what I want to mention while we're looking at canned fruit is that you do want to look for fruit that's preferably packed in water or its own juice. A lot of the canned fruits here, as well as at any grocery store, will be packed in a heavy syrup or a light syrup. Now, if that's all that's available to you, I highly recommend giving them a good rinsing before you serve them, or if you're opening the can and going ahead and putting it in the refrigerator, then I recommend giving them a good rinse and then adding some water to whatever container you're going to be storing them in in your refrigerator. Now, although I have a video where I show you how to make homemade applesauce, again, thinking along the lines of multiple streams of food, this is a good buy. This is a large container. This is 46 ounces of applesauce, and it's $2.89. And what's nice is it's apples, water, and some vitamin C, just to sort of maintain the color. So you can't go wrong with that. It's not sweetened and it doesn't have any other chemical, you know, these long chemical sounding ingredients that we definitely don't want in our food. But this is a very good thing to keep in your pantry or in your extended pantry. It's wonderful for using in place of eggs and other ingredients when you're baking. Uh, so definitely think about picking up some of this uh, for the size and for the price. You can't go wrong. Now, if peanut butter agrees with you, they do have a nice peanut butter here. It's just peanuts and salt. And as you'll see, the oil is still on top. This is a very natural form of peanut butter. You'll have to stir the oil in. Uh, but this is a great option. It's not on sale, but it is $4.19 for a whole pound of peanut butter. And that's a good price, you know, especially compared to uh, a lot of grocery stores. Now, can you get larger jars that may uh, come in a little lower per ounce? Uh, if you go to a Costco or a Sam's Club, yes, but I know not everybody is members there. Um, so if you have an Aldi nearby, this is pretty good. I'd highly recommend it. If you can't beat the price on condiments at Aldi's, this mustard is well over a pound. It's 20 ounces and it's only 95 cents. And the ingredients are very natural. So you can't go wrong. This is like no chemicals in here at all. And they've also got, if you like the more fancy ones, they've got those too. They're a little more expensive, but still at $1.09, you can't go wrong. And as always, they've got a great buy on organic ketchup. So you can't go wrong on that. But now the mayonnaise, stay away from it. It's made with soybean oil. That's a highly processed oil, and we definitely don't want to be eating that. We don't want that in our kitchens. Make uh, mayonnaise homemade. I'll show you how to do it in a minute. It's wonderful, it's easy, and it's delicious. Or just look for a mayonnaise that's made uh, with a less highly processed oil. Something I love about the refried beans at Aldi's is first of all, it says traditional refried beans and they truly are traditional. These are made with lard and that is the traditional way that refried beans should be made. But it can be very hard today to find traditionally prepared refried beans. So if you like them, this is the place to get them, Aldi's. And today they're on sale for 89 cents a can, so it's a good buy. They've also got some great foods for preparing Mexican style meals. They've got the diced tomatoes with green chilies. They've also got just the canned green chilies. And you can't go wrong with any of these. They're good prices. You got 85 cents for the green chilies with the tomatoes, and you got 78 cents for the can of just green chilies. And these are definitely better prices than you find at a lot of grocery stores. Now they've got beans and lentils and split peas and all the prices vary. Now the split peas and the lentils are somewhat better priced or at least they're just lower priced. Uh, beans have gone up in price, it's amazing. Uh, these pinto beans are $3.75 and this is uh, four pounds. So it's not the end of the world. It is coming in under a dollar a pound, but it's more expensive than it used to be. I remember you could get like a big bag at Sam's Club or Costco, a big bag of pinto beans, which are very popular here in Texas, 
uh, for like under $20. Uh, and it was like 25 pounds. Uh, so, but in any event, uh, you can get four pounds for under $4. So that is a good buy. And I think it may almost be coming in less expensive uh, than what I've seen at Walmart and definitely less expensive than what I've been seeing at my local grocery store. Now they've got, they've got lentils and they have uh, split peas. Now both of these are a pound a bag and they're $1.29 a pound. So they're a little more expensive than what you would pay price per pound for beans, which we'll talk about in a minute. But I love lentils, and so I definitely like to keep some on hand. And peas are just great. Uh, split peas like this for making a nice homemade uh, split pea soup with a ham bone. You can't go wrong. Now, as I said, $1.29 for a pound. You know, shop around, keep your eyes open. I think this is pretty comparable uh, to my own grocery store. Uh, but if you find, if you belong to like some of the big box stores like Costco and Sam's Club, you may be able to find bigger boxes for a better price. But $1.29 for a pound, all of these things have been going up in price. There's no getting around it. Uh, but I think that you can get some hearty meals from this. Now they also have great northern beans and black beans. I'm not a huge fan of the black beans. I know a lot of people really love them here in Texas. Uh, but I usually don't stock up on those, but I do like great northern beans because if you soak those, they make a wonderful substitution for the Italian cannellini beans. And I like to use them when I make beans and green soup. I've shared that with you in the past and I'll be sure to link to that recipe if it's something you'd like to make. It's so easy and it's really wonderful and it's so nutritious, especially if you use bone broth as your base. Uh, but those beans here are sold in smaller packages and so they do come out to be a little more expensive per pound. They even actually are measuring them in price per ounce because the bags are smaller. Uh, so if you're not picky necessarily about beans, and I've got some great pinto bean recipes for you. Uh, my husband absolutely loves them and I've got one that you make in the Instant Pot if you have an Instant Pot and they can be ready pretty quickly. Uh, but they're very tasty. So if you're not super fussy about what beans you stock or keep on hand in both your working and your prepper or extended pantry, the pinto beans here are a good buy. Now one thing I have to say, my cart like took a little detour to the chocolate aisle. I think Aldi's has some of the best chocolate and the best prices around. And I am going to get a bunch of these little dark hazelnut crisps. My son Ben is home with us for part of the summer and he loves these. So I'm going to surprise him with them. Plus, the other thing they have, and I don't remember having seen these in the past. I know I've seen things like this at Trader Joe's. Here are the dark chocolate covered almonds and coconut covered almonds sea salt caramel I and mean, they have all these new things at least i don't remember having seen them let me know if if you've been starting to see these at your aldi's but as you see they have such a fantastic selection of chocolates i really like these two i usually keep some of these on hand i like the dark sea salt and the dark mint and the dark orange almond and they're really stocked well at least at this all these today in georgetown if you live in central texas a lot of times these are sold out or very limited quantities but they've got everything in stock today so definitely it's a good time to stock up and for a dollar 99 for these and i love it i'm not i think yeah i think this is the case that these are the ones when you open the box they're individually wrapped like each little piece which definitely helps because you can just take one out and just eat that and not overdo. Now, we really like basmati rice, and today they've got the brown basmati and the white basmati, and I think they're, on, yeah, it is on sale for $2.89. It's just 10 cents down, but at least it's something. Uh, but as I've shared with you, I tend to not buy a lot of brown rice because this goes rancid a lot quicker than this. And yes, this is a little more nutritious, but I highly recommend keeping brown rice in your working pantry and try to use it within six months of buying it. But the nice thing about white rice, this stores for forever. And I mean, technically, I don't know if it's a forever food, but you can really store white rice a long time. 
And what you can do is, and I've shared this with you many times before, cook this in some type of broth instead of water. You can do bone broth, you can just do a simple broth that you make, a simple beef broth or a simple chicken broth. It doesn't need to you know, to be the all and out uh, bone broth. Uh, or if you go the vegetarian route or you're just doing like a meatless Monday or something and you want to use a vegetable broth, you can do that too. And I highly recommend using one of the super mineral broths that I've shared with you. And they're just made from certain types of vegetables, but there's a specific recipe, and I'll link to that below, uh, that really pumps up the minerals. And then if it's in your diet, uh, if you're, what do they say, lacto, ovo vegetarian, if you take dairy and eggs, uh, you can add some butter and some sea salt, and you can do that if you're just using your bone broths uh, or your other meat type broths, and add some butter and some sea salt. Oh my gosh, you've really pumped up the nutrition. Now, they do have a wide variety of tomato sauces in the jars. They do have some down on the lower level, but they're in plastic. And when it comes to tomato sauce, I usually make this homemade. So when I am buying tomato sauce, I usually do buy it in the jar because I'll, chances are I'm going to be stocking this in my extended pantry. And so I would rather store something in glass as opposed to plastic. But I have to tell you, now this is really expensive. This is the Rayos, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, tomato sauce, and it's $6.88. Do you know I got this for under $2 on the clearance aisle at my local HEB? So if you are in Central Texas and you shop at HEB, be sure to always check the clearance aisle. But that's really pricey. And I, not to brag, but I think I can make homemade tomato sauce just as good as the New York City restaurant can. But what I do want to show you is I found this interesting. This sauce is three dollars and 89 cents this one's the vodka sauce and this is the marinara sauce and it's on sale they drop the price 10 cents to three dollars and 89 cents but they have their organic marinara uh, both the basic one and the tomato basil one and it's only a dollar 99 now these jars are i think they're both 24 ounces this is 23.5 close enough and so I was saying to myself, wow, this one's organic. This is not, but it's labeled premium. So I was trying to figure out what the difference is. And the difference is, I think this is trying to compete more with Rayo's. And this marinara is made with Italian tomatoes uh, versus this one that it, it just says tomatoes. But I think that's a pretty significant price difference. Uh, almost two dollars so I would be more inclined to buy this I mean it doesn't really matter to me whether it's organic or not uh, and I would just try to pump up the flavor a little maybe add some garlic I mean you could get this one that has the basil in it already maybe add a little garlic uh, but uh, I just feel that the price even with this one on sale I feel this is kind of expensive so and, and I highly recommend if you've got tomatoes at home and you can get if you grow the italian plum which are the ones i like to grow or if you can get a good buy on a case uh, from the farmer's market make your own homemade marinara it's really going to be good and i have a recipe i show you how to do it it's not difficult at all and you're going to be so pleased with the results now today they have the two pound boxes of angel hair pasta on sale uh, for $1.89, not a significant decrease. I think it's normally, it says it's $1.96, uh, but this is a good price. And it is made from Durham semolina, uh, which unlike just white flour, are the middlings when Durham wheat is milled into flour. The byproduct or the middlings, it's got a little bit of the bran, a little bit of the germ, a little bit of the endosperm. And that's what semolina is. And that's what they use to make pasta. And so uh, it's got a little more nutrition than just white flour. But what's great about this, this is the time of year to really enjoy angel hair pasta because it cooks up literally in minutes. Like they're saying on the package here, three to five minutes, I'd say two minutes for al dente. And you toss this with a lot of vegetables from your garden. Uh, you know, you've heard of pasta primavera, which means like springtime pasta. It's perfect to do with angel hair.
and if the term angel hair, when referring to pasta, is new to you, it just means it's very thin. This is much thinner than regular spaghetti or even thinner than thin spaghetti. Today they've got this Italian pasta, the farfelle. Uh, you may know it as bow tie or butterfly pasta. And the price, this is a good discount. This is one pound for 99 cents and it's down from $1.59. And this is made from the Durham semolina. Now I've shared a lot of times with you about the Pagasa brand of various pastas that they sell here at Aldi's. You know I like the little video, uh, the little pieces that are beautiful for going into soup. Uh, I think, oh yeah, they've got some of the elbows, sometimes that, yeah, they've got the shells up here, and now they are more expensive than they used to be back in the day, but 45 cents still for seven ounces. They are made from semolina, uh, so you can't go wrong with that, but something they have new that I've not seen in the past here, at least at my all these, is they've got the egg noodles, and they're on sale, $1.39, down to 79 cents and this is a 12 ounce bag and it is 100% semolina so this is a good price for egg noodles and Pagasa also has 100% semolina spaghetti and here at Aldi's today it's on sale for 79 cents that's down from $1.39 and this is a two pound bag you can't go wrong this is a really good buy this is time to stock up now, I don't know if this makes it into all the Aldi's, but they do have the Texas olive oil here from Texas, from the Olive Texas Ranch. Uh, they call them olive branches here, which I think is very cute. But we've actually got a lot of them. We grow a lot of olives here in the Texas Hill Country. It's a lot, in many ways, it's a lot like Northern California. It's very hilly, we have lakes, uh, we have a lot of wineries, we have a lot of, as they say, olive branches, and a lot of people raise goats, and we've got goat cheese. It's really lovely here. Uh, but the reason I want to mention this to you is that this particular variety of olive oil, and you have to forgive me if I'm not pronouncing this correctly, Arbequina quinoa, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it, but this is a very mild olive oil. And if you like to bake with olive oil, if you like to make Italian cakes uh, that often call for olive oil, this is a variety of olive oil you would want to look for and to use because it has a very mild flavor. It doesn't have a sharp or peppery bite. Now there's only one left, so I don't know if you'll find a lot of these at your local Aldi, but this is ghee, it's clarified butter. Uh, this is normally very expensive. It's often worth making homemade, uh, but it was $7.99 and they've brought the price down to $5.99. So that's a good sale price. As you can see, it's flying off the shelves. Now they also have coconut oil and this is $5.85 and this is a 14 ounce jar. It's not even a pound. This I find a little expensive. It really depends what uh, your grocery store carries and what the prices are at your local grocery store, but I find this a little high. Uh, also, if you do shop at the big box stores, coconut oil at Costco, and you can get an organic one like this is, is usually really affordable. Uh, so I, I might hold off on this. Now they do carry these packaged bone broths and broths, but I gotta be honest with you, especially when it comes to chicken bone broth. If you're buying whole chickens and you're already making your chicken bone broth, you know that it's really good quality and you're making it for pennies compared to this price. This is a lot of money, I think, for just a package of chicken bone broth that I find some of the ingredients a little questionable. Canned soup is expensive. There's just no getting around it anymore. Uh, the nice thing is, this is a very simple, it's of their Simply Nature line, it is organic, and the ingredients are somewhat limited, which is nice. It is on sale, down from $2.28 to $2.19. Uh, I like to have a few of these, you know, in my extended pantry, my prepper pantry. Uh, if I am under the weather and my husband and son just want to heat something up and do something very easily, if I don't necessarily have something frozen and prepared in the freezer, so these are kind of like your emergency foods. Uh, but yes, 219, I know this is hard for me because I know it's, you can make this for so much less mm -hmm. and I would rather just make lentil soup and then have some containers uh, frozen in the freezer. Uh, but for emergencies, definitely 
picking up a few of these and when they're on sale or a different brand if there's a is a relatively simple brand it doesn't have to be organic but just simple ingredients like the yes line of soups uh, you might see at your grocery store I've pur purchased some of those as well uh, they can be good to have you know just a couple of cans as backup as always Aldi has an amazing selection of canned vegetables and canned beans you can't beat the prices I think they're very affordable uh, even less expensive than my local grocery store yeah they've got cut green beans for 50 cents a can these are 88 cents a can at my local grocery store and if you want organic they're like a dollar 98 can you imagine for a can of green beans uh, but they always have great prices and these are the kind of foods I definitely recommend stocking up in uh, your uh, extended pantry or your prepper pantry just so that you have these things on hand uh, for pulling together quick meals and if you simply don't have the fresh you know the fresh options uh, so I think that the price is right and the, the selection is huge and canned beans although yes dried beans are going to be less expensive and you can as long as you remember to soak them and you can even soak them and cook them and then put them in your freezer so they're always ready for you uh, but it is nice to have canned beans on hand too and at these prices you really can't go wrong I mean 72 cents for great northern beans and with some if you're growing some fresh greens in your garden and you do a greens and bean soup you really can do a very reasonable meal uh, so definitely take your time when you hit the canned aisle the canned veggie and canned bean aisle and uh, pick a nice selection be sure to check out the canned tomatoes when you're at Aldi's, the fire roasted ones, which are a lot of fun uh, to use when you're making some type of dish, maybe with some chicken, uh, like a chicken cacciatore, and you kind of want to have a little bit of that smoky flavor. These fire roasted diced tomatoes are fantastic, and they've knocked them down 10 cents from $1.19 to $1.09 a can. So be sure to check those out. Now, they have the regular diced tomatoes. They've got just the plain, for 87 cents and then what amazes me is the least expensive are the ones and personally I think my favorite are the ones that have the basil garlic and oregano these are wonderful and you can really make a quick chunky uh, spaghetti sauce with these so I highly recommend for 85 cents stock up on these and that's not even the sale price that's just the regular price you can't beat this now they have sauerkraut in a jar, it's not refrigerated, it's just here in the can section, uh, and it is just cabbage water and salt. Now if you were planning on just heating this up and serving it hot, that would be fine, but you're much better off making your own sauerkraut, uh, which I've shared with you, I have a very detailed step-by-step -step video if you're new to making ferments, but you really want to make your sauerkraut homemade, or if you don't make it homemade, you can buy a refrigerated version, but they can be expensive. And making sauerkraut really is not an expensive endeavor. It's just going to be cabbage and salt and maybe a little extra water if the cabbage doesn't release a lot of liquid when you go to ferment it in the jar. But this is not going to have the probiotics, the probiotics, I said that wrong, uh, which is good for our gut health, which is good for our digestive system. We want all that good bacteria that's in the naturally fermented sauerkraut and in naturally fermented vegetables in general. I have a lot of recipes for you on how to make ferments. And I highly recommend that that's something that you uh, start getting into on your traditional foods journey if you've not been fermenting yet. And sauerkraut is a great place to start. It's very easy. And I share with you a little secret ingredient. You grate in a little apple. The good bacteria loves it, and it really helps give the whole fermentation process a boost. Uh, so the good bacteria gets a stronghold before any bad bacteria uh, starts to affect your product. Uh, so, but yeah, if you're going to heat this up, it's $1.65. You want to have this, you know, as we talked, multiple streams of food. You want to have it in your working pantry or your extended pantry for when maybe you're serving some brats and you just want some hot sauerkraut uh, served on the side, which if you cooked your homemade sauerkraut, your naturally fermented sauerkraut, you'd injure the good bacteria. So something like this uh, can come in handy if you just want to uh, heat some sauerkraut. Oh, I just want to mention that they do have a lot of nuts on sale. They've got a pound of walnuts for $5.99, dropped down from $6.49. You know, nuts are expensive. 
I think it's always best if you can buy them when they're in season during the colder months and then just shell them yourself and then just focus on seeds in the springtime and the summer uh, if you're going more you know with seasonal eating uh, but if you need some for baking they definitely have them on sale they've also got the sliced almonds on sale for three dollars and twenty five cents it's just a six ounce bag but as I said not so expensive there's no getting around it but uh, uh, these are nice if you do like a, if you get some fresh string beans if you're growing beans and you do a nice string bean almondine these can be a lot of fun very delicious and if you need to stock up on baking items like yeast and baking powder they usually have pretty good prices on that they're all out of baking soda and cornstarch today uh, but that's just here at this particular Aldi's but this is a good place to stock up you know if you need those things so they've got a lot of sugars here. This is kind of an interesting mishmash of things though, because you got cornmeal, they've got almond flour. It is on sale for $5.39, but you know, nuts go rancid so quickly, and once they're ground, they go even rancid quicker. So I'm always at the school of thought, maybe grind your own nuts if, you're, if you use a lot of almond flour, uh, or buy it where it's very fresh and then use it to you know, make your crust or whatever you're using it to bake with. Use it pretty quickly. Uh, but the reason that I wanted to mention just this section in general, you'll see there's a lot of sugar. They got light brown sugar, they got cane sugar, they got one over here that just also says pure cane sugar. They've got stevia, they've got Splenda, uh, you know, brown sugar, just the whole host of things. If you've ever wondered what all the differences of all the sugars and all the various alternative sweeteners, like your maple sugar and your date sugar and date syrup, which they don't have here, they have the agave. I'm not huge on that, but what I wanna share with you is I have a video where I go over all the different types of sweeteners, starting with sugar, regular cane sugar, and working my way through. And I think you'll really like that video if you're new to alternative sweeteners. Uh, because I walk you through step by step by step what each one of them is made from, what they're all about, what they're used for uh, in a traditional foods kitchen. And so I highly recommend checking out that video. Now they've got their five ounce cans of the Skipjack tuna on sale for $1.09 a can, down from $1.19. And this is you know, sustainably caught and all of that. Uh, I have a lot of videos where I show you how to use tuna. Um, and that, oh my gosh, that depression era, tuna casserole with the biscuit topping, that is so delicious. Uh, and you could get away with just one or two cans of this and make a meal that really can feed a crowd. Uh, but this is a dollar nine a can. It is on sale. They do have some less expensive options. This is their chunk light tuna and it's in water, which is really what I like to look for. And this is 84 cents a can. And this is also a five ounce can. Uh, the chunk light is going to have less mercury uh, than the albacore. Uh, so that's a, a good option if you are going to be cooking with tuna. Now I also wanted to share with you, they've got the canned salmon, and this is almost 15 ounces, 14 and three quarter ounces. Uh, and this is wild Alaskan pink salmon, and this is $3.49 a can. This is a good buy. I've not seen this less expensive at my grocery store uh, or at the big box stores for that matter. And you can make some wonderful, just with one can of this, you can make some wonderful salmon patties that are out of this world. And I'll be sure to link to that recipe. But for $3.49, this is a very good buy. So I definitely recommend stocking up on this. Now, for those of you who like avocado oil, they've got this marked down to $6.79 from $7.29. And this is 17 fluid ounces. Um, as you know, I've shared with you, I'm not a fan of avocado oil. Avocado oil is like a newer oil. I think it was the process to extract the oil from the avocado was developed, I believe sometime in the 1990s. And Sally Fallon, you know, author of Nourishing Tradition, Sally Fallon Morell now, uh, she's not a fan of that because it's more of a newer oil. And so it's not been tried and true and tested in the sense of an oil avocados obviously have 
and they're very nutritious and they've been around a long time. So it's probably fine. I just have to be honest with you, I've never been able to acquire a taste for it. I'm not a huge avocado fan to begin with. I'll eat avocado, you know, I like a lot of lemon juice and sea salt on it. But uh, I did want to let you know that it is on sale, especially for those of you who like to use a lot of avocado oil. Now today they've got organic, 100% grass-fed ground beef on sale for $6.19 down from $6.79. However, I can do better on this price-wise at HEB. So really just comparison shop and price shop uh, when you go to your local grocery store. Uh, that may be a very good price for you, but that is a little steep for me. Also, my grocery store can sell it in a twin pack and it brings the price down to under six dollars a pound which is nice and that's also the kind of thing you want to keep your eye open for if you belong to any of the big box stores so normally Aldi's got really good prices on whole chickens but today there's no whole chickens they've got cut up chickens but those always cost a little more per pound and I just like to have the whole chicken so that I can have the carcass and make my bone broth. You guys know me, <laughs> what a, how I am about that. Uh, but they do have uh, lots of cut up chickens, but unfortunately today, no whole chickens. Now they've got the Irish butter on sale today. It's down from 329 to 319. And I have not tried this, but a lot of folks have told me that this is basically like Kerrygold, just as good. And at this price, it's definitely less expensive than my grocery store for Ker compared to Kerrygold. Uh, so it's probably worth trying. I think I'm gonna give this a try and see what I think of it. Now for baking, they've got their sweet cream unsalted butter on sale for $3.18, down from $3.98. So for baking, that's a good price. Now the reason I focused on their butter that's on sale, that it's unsalted and that's good for baking, because that way you control the salt in the recipe. And most recipes of baked goods uh, that call for butter are usually using unsalted butter. Uh, yes, can you use salted butter? Definitely, you'll just want to pull back a little on whatever the amount of salt is recommended in the baked good. Uh, but this Irish butter, this particular one, I buy the Kerrygold unsalted and salted. Uh, this is a salted version, so I'm going to save this and use this for toast. I, bet you, I think this is going to be really good. You're going to laugh when I tell you this. Maybe the volume or the sound will be a little different. I'm not 100% sure. My phone died, and so we had to switch over to Ted's phone. How funny is that? You know me, I talk a lot. <laughs> But I just wanted to show you, they've got the uncured beef franks for $3.29. These are nice because there's no nitrates and no nitrites in them. Uh, so if those bother your digestive system, and generally they're considered uh, less healthy for us than when things are just naturally cured, they usually use things like, I, I have to look at the um, ingredients on here, uh, but they usually use things like celery salt and whatnot. But the only drawback about these, and why even though they're uncured, I wouldn't rush to get them, uh, they'd really just be kind of like a real backup, is because they do include corn syrup. And I just really rather get hot dogs that don't have any type of sweetener in them. So let's take a look at these. These are organic uncured hot dogs. Now I have bought these in the past, but there is a significant price difference and a significant difference in the amount. Uh, but these are down from $5.99 to $4.99. And these do not contain any corn syrup. Now, they do have a little sugar in them. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but I tend to look for hot dogs that don't have sugar in them. Now they do have this turkey kielbasa on sale and they've also got the regular kielbasa. Uh, these are nice to throw in the freezer and just prepare with some cabbage for like a very inexpensive dinner that can feed a crowd. Uh, I show you how to do that in one of my videos. I'll be sure to link to that below. Uh, is kielbasa perfect? No, but in a pinch if you need something to make a quick and easy and a reasonable dinner because as you see it's on sale 
for $2.99, but even a $3.29, that's a pretty reasonable price uh, to make a very budget-friendly dinner. So, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put that up there. HEB also sells, if you're in Central Texas, sells a great uh, kielbasa uh, that's very natural and also quite affordable. Well, Aldi's always has a lot of options for yogurt, and you can find plain varieties, organic varieties, so on and so forth. But yogurt is really easy to make, and I show you how to do it. You don't need any special equipment. However, you know, all you need is a bowl. <laughs> However, if you've not tried making the new El Ruderai cultured dairy that I've been sharing with you, that what we call the super yogurt, you've got to watch that video and you've got to try making that. And I'm going to be coming out with another video uh, where I show you how to do it in an instant pot for those of you who have that. Uh, but you've got to try that, making that. It's technically not called yogurt. People will call it super yogurt. It's technically just a cultured dairy, but it looks just like yogurt. Well, what I should say is it looks like yogurt in the sense of the creamiest, the thickest Greek yogurt you have ever seen in your life. And it is loaded with good probiotics, different than what's in traditional yogurt. And that's why here in the United States, technically, the U.S. Department of Agriculture has rules on what they, what you can call yogurt. And so that's why it's not called yogurt, but it is so good for you. And watch that video. I go into a lot of detail and I show you how to make it. And I'll be coming back to you with more videos about El Ruderai. Eggs here at my Aldi are $1.18, but I know some of you told me that at your Aldi they were 99 cents, all the better. So definitely shop around. But for $1.18 for a dozen eggs, that's a good price. Aldi's always has a good selection of frozen vegetables, just the same way it does with canned vegetables. And although the bags are smaller, but this is like across the board, you know, so many places that you shop at today uh, have the frozen vegetables in 12 ounce bags. They used to be 16 ounces, uh, but they've got 12 ounces. I like these mixed vegetables. They're just so versatile for casseroles, as well as just a simple side dish or throwing in soups. And they're 87 cents. But I just want you to keep in mind that they are a 12 ounce bag. It's not a pound, but I think unfortunately a lot of frozen vegetables are that way. But they have a huge variety of frozen veggies and there's all different prices depending specifically what you're looking at, but overall I do find the price on their frozen vegetables a little less than most other places. And I just wanted to share with you that they have shredded potatoes here, hash browns, that you can use to uh, make the hash brown cups that I just shared with you last weekend. Well now let's go down the Aldi Fines aisle and see if we find any nice bargains there. Well, I didn't find any deals in this aisle today, so let's just go check out and head home. Well, we had a full day up in Georgetown, and now I want to share with you everything that I wound up buying when we were at Aldi. First, I have to share with you, I splurged and bought these bags. They were only a dollar each, and so I couldn't resist, and I especially loved this one because it's got the state of Texas on it. <laughs> Well, I don't know how much they'll be at, at your Aldi, but they definitely come in handy. I'm going to keep them in my trunk. Well, for the fresh vegetables, I decided to go ahead and get the zucchini. I just couldn't pass up 99 cents a pound. And I'm going to prepare this for a side dish tonight for dinner uh, with some, and it's so easy to do. I just saute it with a little olive oil, salt and pepper. I throw in a can of chopped tomatoes and a couple of cans of sliced mushrooms uh, from my working pantry and it is delicious and my family loves it. Then I also wound up getting these clamshells. I got one baby spinach and one baby spinach with arugula. I like arugula, it's got a little bit of a peppery bite, but I didn't want it to overwhelm because what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna steam both of these and then I'm gonna whirl them with some ricotta and maybe like a little milk or cream just to thin it and use this uh, as a pasta sauce, it's delicious. Next, I wound up getting the sweet potatoes. Under a dollar a pound, this was such a good buy, and sweet potatoes are so good for you, and we love them. I just bake them in the oven, 
and then split them, uh, fill them with a little uh, butter and a little maple syrup and maybe a sprinkle of cinnamon. Delicious. Next, I went ahead, even though I've got a lot of jam, I do like the jam that they have since it's, uh, they always have fruit as the first ingredient. And I got one raspberry, my husband loves raspberry jam, and I got one strawberry. Uh, such a good buy when it starts with fruit. That's what I always look for. When I'm not making my own jam, I, it's got to have fruit as the first ingredient and not sugar. Now these do contain sugar, but it's better than some of the jams and jellies you see today that uh, are made with others more like artificial sweeteners uh, or high fructose corn syrup, things like that. So I'm always happy to find these. And then I definitely had some of their peanut butter uh, fall in the cart. And uh, that was a good buy too. And this, I really like to just keep some peanut butter on hand. It's not like we're eating it every day. Uh, but I just stay on top of uh, the best buy date because, you know, things with nuts and whatnot, these can go rancid. You know, this is not a forever food. Uh, although jams, I find they last well past their best buy date. Uh, but I'll just probably keep this in my prepper pantry, my extended pantry. And uh, this comes in very handy, like just the other night. Uh, we had two blackouts. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't expect that so early. Uh, in the season, you know, we're not really in full-blown summer yet, uh, but having some peanut butter on hand, this got us through, talking about blackouts, this got us through when we had the ice storm, and we're like, oh, had power, hard, hardly any power for about a week, it was like on and off every once in a while, but for the most part, uh, we were without power, so that's when, you know, I have that emergency uh, a uh, uh, grocery list for you and it covers two weeks of food to buy and then I have a menu plan and it's for how it's all foods that can be prepared uh, if you are without electricity and clean running water and I tell you what to buy and then how to prepare it I give you a one week meal plan if hopefully you're not without power for two weeks but you can always repeat that I'll put a link to that below uh, because that's a very uh, handy thing to have as your sort of emergency uh, food supply. Then I did get some lentils. I love lentils in any way, cooked and put on top of a salad as a soup. And, uh, and I also got some uh, split peas. Again, these, they really last very well. I, I think I've shared with you, I know that sometimes beans and lentils and, and split peas cook up very easily, even when they're really old. Uh, beans can take a little longer, uh, but I think I've shared with you before there's that study that these scientists did. And I think, I don't know if it was from through Utah State University or one of the universities that does a lot of work on um, uh, preparedness. And they cooked beans, I think, they, they were 80 years old and they cooked them and the, the testers were eating them. And yes, they had less nutrition, but were not completely void of nutrition. They still had a lot of nutrition in them. And the taste testers thought they, they didn't know what they were eating because they gave them those beans as well as new beans. And uh, it was funny because they thought for the most part they tasted the same <laughs> as the new, the new and the old. And speaking of beans, I got some pinto beans. You know, we eat a lot of pinto beans. We really like them. You know, it's popular being in Texas, too. And I've got a, a great recipe that Ted loves. So I do make a lot of pinto beans. And this was, you know, it wasn't su such a bad buy as I shared with you uh, when we were in the store. Four pounds, you know, I just don't see the big bags anymore. Uh, so it, finding four pounds, I was happy. And that worked out to be less uh, per pound then I would wind up paying, you know, if I was buying pinto beans locally or, or in Austin at a Walmart. Then I also picked up some of the basmati rice. We talked about why I like the white rice, but how I can, because it lasts longer, but how I can really pump up the nutrition uh, of white rice with, by replacing the water, you know, as I said, with bone broth, some butter, some salt. And we, I really like the basmati. And it's funny because that's one of the things that initially, when I was younger, I wasn't a huge fan of the uh, basmati. I would just eat the very, you know, basic rice, the basic long grain white rice. Uh, but 
with my husband, I was experimenting a lot more because my mother-in-law would like make jasmine rice and different rices like that. We, we also enjoy jasmine and we really like the basmati too. Then I picked up some cans of the tuna fish. I got the chunk light, you know, the lower in mercury because this will be uh, great for, I'm going to make that uh, depression era tuna pie. If you've not tried that, I'll put the link below. You've got to try that. That is so delicious. And the biscuits are so unusual. You make them with cottage cheese and you do add flour, but the main ingredient is cottage cheese. And you can even use your homemade cottage cheese that, that I've showed you how to make. And you actually roll them just, it reminds me of those canned biscuits that people bang on the uh, on the counter, you know, and, the, and the, the can expands. You roll them like that and then you just slice them and then you just top them on top of the casserole. It's so delicious and I've shared with you, my son does, is not a fan of tuna noodle, noodle casserole, but he's home with us now uh, for the summer. And I had made this, I think I must have made it maybe over Christmas time, the last time he was home. And he inhaled it, we all inhaled it. So you've got to try this tuna, uh, depression era tuna pie. Uh, so this I, I stocked up on that. I normally don't have a lot of canned tuna on hand so because uh, I don't make a lot of tuna dishes uh, but I've been seeing something that's very interesting on the internet uh, because salmon's getting a little more expensive and the canned chicken the price has gone through the roof so chicken patties and salmon patties are getting a little more expensive to make and I've been seeing people make tuna patties so I'm intrigued maybe I'll try that. Uh, then I got, I think I have two cans of this, might be in the other bag. Uh, I got the diced tomatoes and these, these were the least expensive. And so that, I was so happy because these are, these are my favorite. They had the fire roasted, they were on sale, a little more expensive. Uh, and then they had just the plain, which were a few pennies more a can uh, than these. And I love this one because it's basil, garlic, and oregano, and it goes perfectly. These are the tomatoes I'm going to use when I cook up the um, zucchini. This is such an easy side dish to whip up, and uh, you can have it ready in no time. And it's fresher, even though you're using canned, you, I add mushrooms too, even though you're using canned tomatoes and canned mushrooms, because you're using fresh zucchini, I find it just fresher in general than the mixture because I think they sell that mixture in a can zucchini uh, tomatoes and mushrooms uh, it's just so much fresher when you use fresh zucchini which would make sense <laughs> and here's my other can so I'll keep those together uh, then I usually you know when I'm there if I need some mustard I just feel that you can't beat the price uh, this is just such a good buy and it's what I love is the ingredients are so basic. It's basically distilled vinegar, water, mustard seed, salt, turmeric, and paprika. This is such a pure, you know, like real food, whole food type mustard. No sugar, uh, no uh, preservatives, just as is. So I think this is a great thing. Uh, to pick up. And then I also got, uh, generally we don't use a lot of ketchup, but with my son home, uh, he loves when I do like fried potatoes and all of that, and he enjoys them with ketchup. And again, their ketchup you can't beat. It's, and this one's organic. Uh, it's very, uh, it's very tasty. We're very happy with it. Also, speaking of fish products, uh, this, as you saw when we were in all these, you know, was in between three and four dollars. You can't go wrong. I mean, this is like twice the price at my local grocery store. And it's wild Alaskan pink salmon. And if you read up on this and do a little research, you'll learn that they're basically, uh, you know, catching the fish up in Alaska and the canneries are right there. And so, uh, whether it's this brand or another brand, they're all basically the same. So if you can find, you know, they're bringing the fish in, the canneries, like I said, are right there, they're canning them up. So if you can find something like this, that's a great price. And you can flake this on top of a, a salad, you know, in the summer as we're warming up, uh, or you can do the salmon patties. You know, I've got recipes for you 
on that and they're delicious. And these make quick and easy dinners that are also very affordable. Then as I shared with you when we were in all these, I, got, I did get a can of the refried beans. The, the traditional, I like that they really are very traditional. Okay. Oh, and then here, these are sort of, these are kind of real prepper pantry things. If for any reason I'm a little under the weather or something, and I don't have something in the fridge for the guys, uh, they can go ahead and warm up these soups. Now I thought they had, as we saw when we were there, some really good prices on pasta. I wound up getting uh, the Pagasa. I like their uh, video, those little pieces. Uh, but they had the um, uh, two pound bag of spaghetti. Can't go wrong with that. And then this was the angel hair. And this, I think what I'm gonna do is cook up and toss with that green sauce that I'm gonna make uh, with the baby arugula and the baby spinach. You know, it'd be a really good springtime kind of summer combination meal there and tasty and nutritious. It's a good way to sneak greens into everything. Uh, but yeah, this was a fantastic buy uh, for, for spaghetti. And everything is made with semolina. As you'll see, 100% semolina. So, uh, you know, and I, I've talked to you about this ad nauseum, how good it is to uh, buy. Don't Never feel bad that you're not making pasta homemade because unless you're making it with semolina flour, it's not going to be as nutritious, like if you're just using all-purpose flour, it's not going to be as, as nutritious as pasta that's made with durum semolina because that is more, has more vitamins and minerals than, uh, than just all-purpose flour. And then, of course, I got the farfalle, <laughs> the butterfly or bow tie pasta. Uh, that's always delicious. That's nice with if you, after you roast a chicken, if you've got some leftover chicken. Uh, depending on how many people you have to feed, but if you've got enough, uh, that still looks kind of nice. If it's if it's sort of those pieces that don't always look terrific, those are great to add into soup after you make bone broth with the chicken carcass. But if you have some pieces that look kind of nice and you chop them up and mix them with the farfalle and put a nice little sauce on it, you can either do a cream sauce or you can do a red sauce, either way, whatever you have. That's a lovely dinner. And it doesn't really seem like a leftover dinner because it's kind of been reinvented, you know, with the with using uh, the bow tie or uh, butterfly pasta. Then I went ahead and got some egg noodles. We have not had egg noodles in a long time. I don't know if I, you know, sometimes things just fall out of my rotation and I don't buy them. But I thought these were a good buy. Again, the same Pagasa brand, and it's 100% semolina. The only difference is that it's also got egg in it, which is good. And I think, oh, I forget where they, they said how many eggs. I thought I read it when I was in the store. But uh, in any event, uh, it's nice. Oh, it's got five points right on the front, 5.5% egg. These are lovely. Uh, whatever you make, again, if you didn't want to do the farfalle and you had some nice pieces of chicken, and the, that's really good in a cream sauce, and then put, put over uh, the egg noodles, oh, everybody will inhale it. Uh, then I did go ahead and I got this applesauce. Uh, again, I'll watch uh, the best by date. Sometimes I think things like this, especially when they're in plastic, are best used within the best by date. But that, along with the peanut butter, these are kind of things I like to always have on hand in the event that we need something to eat and we don't have any power. Or if I'm just out of eggs or something like that and I need some applesauce to bake with, it's a good substitute for eggs. Uh, so, and again, that was such a good buy. Then, well, what can I say? We had some goodies fall into the cart. <laughs> This I had not seen before. Maybe this was at, is at your Aldi, but this reminded me of some of the things you see at Trader Joe, Trader Joe's. This is dark chocolate covered coconut almonds, and this is dark chocolate covered almonds. And it was so cute because my son had come down a little earlier 
And he saw these and he's like, oh, can I have them? That's kind of why I'm like getting some of these treats with him being home. And I said, oh, yeah, right after I uh, share with my sweet friends what I got at Aldi, you can definitely indulge. Uh, but these are nice. And, you know, as I shared with you when we were in the store, really not expensive for something like this. You know, and it's a treat, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not something you're buying every day. But as a treat, it's a good price. And then also for my son, because he loves these, I actually bought four of these. And I have to tell you, I will say I love chocolate. Chocolate and coffee is kind of two of my vices. <laughs> but uh, he really likes these. They're sort of like little Kit Kats, and they're all individually wrapped. And then they have this uh, like kind of crunchy uh, filling, you know. Uh, he really enjoys these, so I bought four of these. Then, we don't want to leave Mama out, so <laughs> I showed you these in the store, and I was telling you how these are, are some of my favorites. And I love these because each one, it, they're individually wrapped, so it's very good for portion control. Uh, but I got the dark mint, and if you like peppermint, uh, or anything in the mint family, you'll love this. This is probably my favorite. Uh, then I got the orange almond. Pretty much everybody in the family, in my family, likes this one. And then I got the dark sea salt. So a good supply of goodies. Well, if you want to see more hauls from Aldi, Walmart, Costco, Sam's Club, as well as how to stock your prepper pantry, how to do it for a reasonable price, and how to store everything the best way to keep it as fresh as possible, be sure to click on this video over here where I have a playlist that covers all of this and more. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.